All right. Good to be back in the house of the Lord tonight, ain't it? All right, let's all get our handles to stand the same page. Number 10. Number 10. Turn over to page number 55. Number 55. Every joy will be when we all. 
Let's don't forget to pray for the pastor and his wife as they're traveling. They'll be traveling back this way tomorrow. So pray they get have travel mercies. Uh, let's don't forget to pray for Miss Nikki and the Bushy family. Angela and yeah, I got Nikki didn't I? Right, and you I'll get it right directly. All right. <laughs> I can't even Lord knows all about it. Uh, Brother Robert, would you lead us in opening prayer tonight? All right, it's good to have Brother Charlie Russell with us tonight. He's going to come and bring us what God's laid on his heart. Brother. All right, let's go ahead and take our Bibles uh, this evening and go to the book of First Peter. Chapter number one, the book of First Peter, chapter number one. And uh, while you're turning, let me say it is an honor to be here at the Tabernacle Baptist Church. Been looking forward to coming. And uh, again, my name is Brother Charlie Russell. I got with me tonight my wife, Betsy. And uh, we're members right over here at the other end of the county at the Calvary Baptist Church on White's Mill Road. And uh, been missionaries with uh, Rock of Ages Prison Ministry now, a little over 23 years. And uh, I want everybody to go ahead and relax, amen. I know you don't know me, this is my first time here, but just take a deep breath and I'm going to tell you what Elizabeth Taylor told her fifth husband. I won't keep you long, amen. So uh, I promise you I'm not going to keep you all night. So just going to give you something from the Word of God. And again, been looking forward to coming, I, I appreciate you pastor and I'm going to be honest with you, my uh, me and uh, Brother White, we're not fishing buddies. We're not hunting buddies. We don't hang around a whole lot together. Actually, uh, our paths crossed when he was in evangelism and uh, in churches together and meetings together. And uh, uh, now, of course, now he's pastoring, and I don't see him out on the road a whole lot anymore. But I sure do appreciate him and his wife, and they've always been a blessing. And I've always been... Uh, Always been kind and always been nice to me. Amen. I'll tell you something. Not every Baptist preacher is nice. Some of them's mean as a junkyard dog. Amen. Some of them just hateful. And uh, But I, do, I sure do appreciate you, Pastor. And good to be here tonight. And again, we'll give you something from God's Word. And then we'll let you go. Is everybody good? Glad you're saved tonight. Amen. Glad you come to church. Amen. Let's all stand. And uh, for the reading of God's Word. And uh, like I said, I won't be long and just give you a few things. Got about five verses we'll look at. And uh, we'll see what the Holy Spirit does for us uh, here tonight. 
1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Verse number 5, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Would you partner with me in prayer? Let's join our hearts together and ask the Lord just to bless this time that we've gotten His Word this evening. Father, we do lay at Your feet the sacrifice of praise that You are so very worthy of this evening. God, we realize, Lord, if You never gave us another dollar bill to spend, if You never gave us another good night's rest, if You never gave us another bite of food to eat, we can still lift up our hands and praise You just because You're God. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to be back in church tonight. It hadn't too many, been too many years ago, Lord, that we were in the pandemic and in the middle of COVID and we couldn't even come to church. But, Lord, we're thankful we're able to gather tonight. And thank you, Lord, for a good crowd that's come out this Wednesday evening. Father, we lay this time in your word on the altar. Pray that you speak to every heart. God, you know I need your help tonight. Father, I stand empty and uh, uh, just useless without you. Pray God you fill me with your power, fill me with your touch. We claim your grace, we claim your mercy tonight. Be with pastors, he's away. Ministered all these objects of prayer that were mentioned tonight here at the church house. Sick bodies need healed, lost souls need saving, lives need touching. And God, you just continue to work as only you can. Rebuke Satan, the demons of darkness that always attempt to hinder when your work's being done. Father, we'll thank you and praise you. We ask these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. You be seated this evening. The first thing I want you to see tonight in our text in verse number one is the believer's position in society. The believer's position in society. It says right here, verse number one, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers. Did you, do you see that word right there? To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Folks, I was uh, born, in, born July the 24th, 1967 at Memorial Mission Hospital, a couple hours up the road in Asheville, North Carolina. And uh, let me say this, uh, I hope I get a good amen right here, but I've been a citizen of the United States of America all of my life, amen? And I know there, there are people say what they want to say, and I understand we got issues, and I understand we got problems, but let me say this, this is still the greatest nation on the face of planet Earth, bar none, amen? And I'm thankful to be an American, I'm glad for my heritage, I'm glad for the 55 years that I've lived in this country. But can I tell you, the more and more time goes on, I don't even recognize our country anymore. Boy, me and my wife went out to eat. It's been a while back. And, and, and we, we rode up. I live in Conover, right off exit uh, 132 there. And uh, we drove up to Hickory to grab a bite to eat. Man, I felt like a stranger. Man, I've been in Catawba County for years, but I felt like a stranger. And I never thought I'd say this, but I feel like a stranger in my own country. 
And you know, there's a reason that I feel like a stranger and there's a reason that you should feel like a stranger. And you know why it is? Hallelujah, we are strangers. Amen. Folks, you got to understand, I need reminding. Uh, my wife needs reminding. Our churches need reminding. And I'm sure from time to time, you need reminding that this world is not our home. Praise God, we're just passing through. And I don't know about anybody else, the more I watch the news and the more I listen to the radio, I'm glad this world's not my home. Somebody say amen. And I'm glad, hallelujah, for the child of God, for the born-again Christian, this is the worst it's going to get. Amen. I shared with you that I've been with Rock of Ages about 23 years, a little over 23 years now. And uh, traveled all over the world for nine years. And we go to, to several foreign countries. I've been to nine different countries. And we go in and pass out Bibles and, and preach and distribute literature. And, and I would get what they called a temporary visa. Because I wasn't actually moving there. And I wasn't changing my citizenship. I was only going to be there for a couple of weeks or two to three weeks at a time. Sometimes they would issue what they called a temporary visa because they knew that was not my home. Amen. Folks, do you realize, I know you don't remember it, but do you realize the day that you were born all you got was a temporary visa for planet earth. This world is not our permanent home. Hey man, we're just visitors. We're just strangers. We're on a temporary visa. And praise God, one of these days, hallelujah, we'll finally get home. Amen. And I, and I will say it again. That, that, that ought to make you at least smile a little bit. Amen. That ought to at least make you grunt a little bit. Say amen right there. Boy, this world's gone crazy. Boy, you can't trust nobody. Can't trust the government. Can't trust the media. My poor wife, she goes, uh, she goes grocery shopping every Thursday. Every Thursday evening, she's saying, man, I want like to have more money. Amen. Everything going up. Gas going up. Eggs, everything going up. But aren't you glad, hallelujah, for the Christian, for the child of God, this is the worst that it'll ever get. Amen. And for us born again believers, the best is yet to come. Glory to God, one of these days will be H-O-M-E, home. Amen. Amen. Then the next thing which you see, not only the believer's position in society, uh, uh, we're strangers here. The second thing which you see in verse number 2, we see the blessed plan of salvation. The blessed plan of salvation. Look what he says right here. Verse number 2, he says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. You say, Brother Russell, what in the world is that verse saying? Talking about the plan of salvation. Let me give you these things real quick, four things real quick. This verse is teaching us about the plan of salvation. Number one, the Father thought it. The Father thought it. The Son bought it. The Spirit brought it. And praise God, I called it. Amen. I'm going to say that. He say, Preacher, what does this verse say? It says, the Father thought it. Amen. The Son bought it with His precious blood. The Spirit brought it. And praise God, I called it. Amen. Aren't you glad for the blessed Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son, who all three got involved in our redemption? Can I, let me just say two things right here as we move along. Let me say, first of all, you got to understand that the human race was so fouled up. The human mind is so fouled up. The human heart is so fouled up 
that all three persons of the Trinity had to get involved in our redemption. It was too big for the Father to handle alone. It was too big for the Son. All three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had to get involved in our redemption. And let me give you another thing. You got to understand when God does something, all of God does it. The Father never acts independently of the Son and the Spirit. The Spirit never acts independently of the Father and the Son. The Son never acts independently of the Father and the Spirit. Amen? But when God does something, all of God does it. And all three persons of the Trinity were involved that you and I could be saved and have a place in that home in heaven. Amen? Let me touch on this word right here. Don't, don't let this word uh, scare you. He says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Don't let that word election and foreknowledge scare you. Amen? Say, so preacher, explain it. Hey, I can't explain it, but I'm going I'm to give you an illustration just the best I can give you. This helped me a lot. I hope it helped you. June the 10th, 1986. There was a preacher preaching and that preacher showed me a door from the Word of God. On that door was an old blood-stained cross, amen. And on top of that door, it said, Whosoever will, amen. Honey, it didn't matter who you are, what color skin, how bad you been, how good you been. That old bloody door with that old bloody cross said, Whosoever will may come. June the 10th, 1986, by faith I walked through that door. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior and I got gloriously saved. But when I walked through that door, I turned around and looked at the other side. You know what the other side of the door said? It said chosen from the foundation of the world. You say explain that, Rev. I can't, but I like it. See, from my perspective, and from our perspective, anybody can get saved. Anybody can get born. And aren't you glad, amen? Aren't you glad we preach a whosoever will gospel? But when you look from God's side, God knew from the foundation of the world, amen, that old Charlie Russell was going to be born and I was going to need a Savior. Amen. So from our side, it says whosoever will but buddy, on the other side of the door, it says chosen from the foundation of the world. That, that'd make a Lutheran shout, say amen right there. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Aren't you glad for the plan of salvation? Amen. Boy, I'm glad it wasn't up to religion to save me. I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't up to the government to save me. Amen. Y'all know I, I, a little bit here. Y'all know over in Europe and 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 and, and uh, Germany and places over there, they used to have government church. You used to have to pay taxes to support a government church, honey. If you think government's health care is a mess, y'all see government religion. Amen. But aren't you glad it wasn't the government's idea? Aren't you glad that God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit all worked together so that you and I could be saved? And then let me give you this one right here, uh, verse number 3. We're doing good. Y'all still with me tonight? We're doing good on time. Look at verse number 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I want you to see in verse number 3, we see the believer's power to succeed. The believer's power to succeed. Look what he says right here. He says, the last part, says by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Aren't you glad we got a Savior who's alive and well? I said, aren't you glad we got a Savior who's alive and well? 
Say, Brother Russell, how do you know? Because I've talked to him several times today. Say amen right there. Now, here's where I want you to get. Here's where this, I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you. Because we've all got things. We're all in battles. We're all got struggles. We've all got issues. Amen. Do you realize that the same power that got Jesus Christ out of the grave is available to you? Amen. I don't know what your life consists of, but you don't have to pull it off in the energy of your own power. I'm a chaplain at a prison. We've got about 1,400 adult male offenders. We've got about 400 employees. I'm glad I don't have to pull that off in my own energy. But the same power of God that got Jesus out of the grave is available to you. Amen? Whether you're Work situation, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not blind. I see quite a few. I'm glad I'm not the only gray head in here. <laughs> Amen. I remember when my daddy retired, he said, Son, I don't know how in the world I ever held down a full-time job. He said, All I do is go to the doctor. Amen. He said, This getting old ain't for cowards. Amen. Amen. But aren't you glad you don't have to get old with your own strength? Aren't you glad that the power of God is available to you? Amen. I don't know what you're dealing with. Uh, I don't know, maybe some of y'all raising kids. I don't know, maybe some of you raising grandkids. I don't know what, what, what you're dealing with in life. But you don't have to pull it off in your own power. That same power that got Jesus out of the grave is available to you. I remember I, I, I've done, uh, of course, I've been in ministry for 23 years. But, man, I worked in a leather factory for seven and a half years. I worked in a hosiery mill. I, 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 I drove a Lance Cracker truck. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember them little old Lance pecan pies? Praise God, I kept them right behind my seat. Amen. Best thing they made, them little old pecan pies. I worked in a furniture factory. And I want to tell you something. Just, just making a living in America is a demanding thing. Amen. Just going into an old plant. I remember them old plants. My soul, worse than middle school. Ain't it? Worse than middle school. Who's dating this one this week? Who's boyfriend and girlfriend this week? I ain't never seen such a mess in my whole life. But I'm glad I didn't have to go in there in my own power. Amen. The Lord helped me. And I don't, and I don't know what you're dealing with. I think, look at this young man right here. No doubt he's probably in school. Amen. What grade you in? You ain't got to go through sixth grade in your own power. The same power that got Jesus out of the grave will get you through sixth grade. Amen. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I know one thing. God will help you. His power is available. You'll take time. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the Lord. He ain't going to chase you down. If you want to do it in your energy, he'll let you. You want to run yourself in the ground, he'll let you. But I promise you this, if you slow down and pray, you slow down and read your Bible, you slow down and spend time with him, he'll charge you up, my friend. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's good to us, ain't he? Amen. So we see the believer's power to succeed. And again, don't ever forget, same power that got Jesus out of the grave is available to you. Then we see right here, verse number four, the believer's prospect and citizenship. The believer's prospect and citizenship. Let's look at verse number four. He says, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Hey Amen. It's going to be good to get to him. I got a mom and daddy in heaven. I got some grandparents in heaven. Hey Amen. Got some friends. I got some preacher friends that are already in heaven. And I'm looking forward to seeing them. Hey Amen. You know we've got an inheritance waiting over there. What is that preacher? Well, I know it's a mansion. That's part of it. I know there's some streets of gold. That's part of it. I don't know what else, but it's going to be good. 
And see, we can't, we can't wrap our minds around this concept of incorruption. I bought this watch the other day at Walmart, eight dollars and ninety-three cents, and I'm just waiting for it to stop. How many of y'all learned? Let me get a good amen right here. How many have y'all learned you get what you pay for? Amen. amen. My good watch, I broke the band, and I ain't had time to get it fixed, so I bought me a cheap. That, but you know, we're geared for that. We, we understand in, in our culture things are going to break down. Me and my wife, 2004, uh, we bought a, a 2000, it was three years old, a 2001 Toyota Highlander. Man, it, nicest vehicle we'd ever owned, man. Leather seats, air conditioning, cruise control, man, nice. That car right now is sitting in our driveway 365,000 miles. The, the, the clear coat's gone. The paint's chipping. The leather seats have got holes in them. You know, that's life on planet Earth. Things break down. You know what, you know what really makes me sad? I'm breaking down. Right? Man, I got things hurting I didn't know I had. Somebody say amen. Right? My ankles give me a fit. My knees starting to give me a fit. Legs give me a fit. Right? We, we live in a world of corruption. And it's hard for us to wrap our minds around a place where there is no corruption. Amen? Where there's no death. Where there's no disease. Where there's no rust. Amen, where well, there's no rot. Amen, but praise God, we're going to that place. He said we've got a, uh, an inheritance there, incorruptible, undefiled, that fate is not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. <laughs> Anybody here ever made reservations? You know what reservations are good for? Nothing. Have any of y'all ever gone through the experience of reserve, renting a car? That's useless. Amen? You tell them, I want a mid-sized car. I want, I, I want four seats. I, I want air conditioning. You know, they're going to give you what they want to give you. When you get there, you're going to get what they got. You can, you can spend half a day and make a reservation, but it's pointless. But let me tell you something. I'm glad God's not like a car rental place when he says your inheritance is reserved you know what that means it's reserved and I don't know when I'm going to heaven but praise God I know when I get there my inheritance is going to be there waiting on me amen praise God then let me give you this last one we'll be done tonight we've done good we've done good on time we see right here <clears throat> The believer's preservation and security. Look at verse number five. And we're, we're going to wrap up with this. We're going to pray and we're going to wrap up. He says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Probably without a doubt as a, as a chaplain at a prison, the number one question I get asked Preacher, can you lose your salvation? And I always say this. Let me tell you something, sir. You might lose your salvation, but you won't lose God's salvation. Amen? It blows my mind. And I don't hate people. I love people. But it blows my mind the belief system of some churches and some denominations. They say you got to... Believe Jesus and trust the blood and trust the empty tomb and trust the resurrection and trust the love of God and the mercy of God, the grace of God to get saved. But you got to be perfect to stay saved. Amen. That don't make no sense. Right? Makes zero sense. Let me tell you something. The same, the same grace that saved us keeps us saved. The same mercy that saved us keeps us saved. And the same power that saved us keeps us saved. Amen? Let me say a couple things about that. Number one, that ought to give you some security. Amen? I'm not, I, listen, I don't know a whole lot, but praise God, I know I'm saved. 
Amen. I'm so saved, it's ridiculous. I'm so saved, it's pathetic. I'm so saved I could swing out over hell on a rotten sweet potato vine and holler boo at the devil. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, I'm saved and I'm secure. And let me give you this. I, as a preacher, I get asked sometimes, Brother Russell, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to be honest with you folks. I, I'm, 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 I don't know. Some people say we're on the verge of another civil war. I don't know. Some people say we're on the verge of an economic collapse. Some people say that China is getting ready to attack us and North Korea and Iran is going to jump in and attack us. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know this, I know I'm saved. Amen. And I'm going to be honest with you. If China sends one of them balloons over and drops a nuclear bomb on Conover and I blow up, my last breath here will be my first breath over there. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I went to bed last night. I didn't even have to take a baby aspirin. Hello? And I'll be honest with you. Look at that. I ain't shaking. I ain't a bit nervous. I ain't, I ain't worried about China. I ain't worried about Wall Street. Hello? And I realize it could get ugly. I realize things could get bad. But I know I'm saved. And if I starve to death underneath a bridge on Interstate 40 in a global recession, guess what? When I take my last breath here, my next breath will be in glory. And aren't you glad for that? The same power. How many of y'all remember the day you got saved? Boy, what, do you remember the power of God? The same power that saved you is the same power that's keeping you saved. Now let me give you my conclusion. We're going to pray and I'm going to be done tonight. Look, let's go back to verse number 3. Look at the last part. Look at the last part of verse number 3. He says, By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the dead. Do you realize that everything we have as Christians is because of that empty tomb? You know what's weird? Let me tell y'all something weird. This is only the second time I have ever stepped foot in this church. This is the first time that I've ever preached in this church. But I feel right at home. I feel like I'm in, my, in the living room of my house. I feel like I'm with people that I've known for 20 years. How come, Rev? Because of that empty tomb. The same Jesus that got out of that tomb and moved in my heart, He lives in your heart. And you know what that means? That makes us family. Amen? You know why? If it wasn't for the empty tomb and Jesus Christ, I'd have never met your pastor. Right? Right? Do you realize that everything we have and everything we got is a product of a risen Savior? We couldn't pray if it wasn't for a risen Savior. We couldn't worship if it wasn't for a risen Savior. I've never seen Jesus. I've never touched him, but I know he's alive. Amen? And folks, don't ever forget that, 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 that all our salvation the security of our salvation, our hope of heaven, the power that we need to survive. Has anybody, I'm 55 years old. How many of y'all have learned life can get ugly? How many of y'all have learned that life can pick you up and just body slam you? But the same power that got Jesus out of the grave is the same power that helped you get up. Amen? Life's tough. But you ain't got to do it in your own power. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. And folks, don't ever forget verse number three. Verse number three. It's all because we've got a Savior that's alive and well. And as Fox News keeps telling us more and more bad news and CBS and NBC keeps telling us more and more bad news and more and more nonsense coming out of Washington you just lift your hands and praise God and say, Lord, I'm thankful this ain't all there is. Because Jesus is alive and he lives forever, I'm going to live forever.
And one of these days, this old world here will be nothing but a bad memory. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Aren't you glad he's alive and well tonight? Let's all stand for a word of prayer. Brother, you need to make any more announcements or anything? Are you done? Or What's that? Okay. Let's all stand our feet for prayer. Amen. Me and my wife, we've got to go make a stop. But I tell you what, uh, uh, I know it's COVID and I know it's flu season. If you're scared to shake hands with somebody, at least fist bump somebody. Don't leave out of here without telling somebody you love them. Don't leave out of here without telling somebody you appreciate them. Amen. I appreciate my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Don't you? Amen. So we're going to, uh, I'm, I'm always in a hurry, but if we get too, too busy to talk to our brothers and sisters a few minutes, we're too busy. So take a few moments to fellowship after we pray. Father, we love you. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, for your many blessings. My, 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 what a great time to be at Tabernacle Baptist Church this evening. God, I appreciate a good, <laughs> good crowd that's come out. Man, what good liberty to preach. And uh, Folks listened. Folks were paying attention. And I sure thank you for that. And God, Lord, Lord, just help us to take these five verses to heart. Help us, God, to chew on them the rest of the week. Lord, that you're alive and well, that uh, you've saved us and we're saved for all eternity, that you've given us the same power that got you out of the grave. And Lord, help us, God, just to soak on that and chew on that this week. Again, we do pray for Pastor and his family as they're away. We do pray for the Tabernacle Baptist Church. Take this church to higher heights and deeper depths in the things of God. Use this church as light and salt on this side of the county where folks can be saved and born again by the good grace of God. Lord, keep hell off your people this week. Keep the demons of darkness off your people this week. And uh, meet the needs as only you can. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you. We ask these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Y'all enjoyed the message tonight. It's good to have him with us. Brother, that's a good message. If y'all if y'all appreciate what he's done, spoke to us tonight, let him know it, will you? Let him know how much you appreciate him being here. All right. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you.